we don't believe that conflict is, is inevitable here, and that there is time and space, and there's, there's room for diplomacy here to reach uh, the best possible outcome. Uh, well, see, the Pentagon's still hoping for a peaceful solution with Russia. As President Biden prepares to speak virtually with Vladimir Putin today, a call comes as Russia builds up a massive military presence, some say 175,000 troops, and U.S. officials anticipate an imminent invasion in January. Former State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortega knows how serious this is. She joins us now with the three things that President Biden must say today to Vladimir Putin. Hi, Morgan. You knocked it down to three. Why don't you go through it with us? Right. Well, I, I think that there are a host of things that they need to talk about, but the most timely and pressing thing, of course, is related to Ukraine and to the invasion there. Um, what's important to know is that whenever Russia in, invaded Crimea or in the Obama administration, the same people are in power now that were in power back then. And so I think that they really need to ask themselves, why is the Russians, why is Putin willing to attack and evade their neighbors on their watch? Perhaps it's because they actually didn't do anything to arm uh, Ukraine to support Ukraine the last time around and the Russians quite simply think that they can get away with it now why does any of this matter if you, the viewers are watching and saying why do we why do we care if Russia invades Ukraine because there is a first of all they're a democratic country um, and if they're going to do it to Ukraine they can do it to other democratic countries in their sphere uh, secondly uh, I think the Chinese are watching this very very closely right uh, and they're looking to see what the Russians get away with in Ukraine can they get away with the same thing in Taiwan one. And if you have uh, a tendency around the world uh, for Russia and China and other authoritarian regimes to, to attack democratic states, to take right. away their leaders and the rule of law, uh, that is a really dangerous principle that we're setting up around the world. Uh, evidently, um, on the so Wall Street we Journal, also, they're expecting yeah. hardcore proposals from President Biden, which is odd because they're initiating the action and we're doing that in response. But let's go through your, your three. Every Russian soldier who crosses the Ukrainian border uh, will come back in a body bag. You think he should say that directly. We'll sanction two Russian companies yes. for each American yes. company that you hack. Don't think about killing Alexei Navalny. Uh, that's, uh, these are the three things uh, that you're talking about primarily. Come out and say that up front. Does tone matter with him? You know him. Uh, well, I don't know him that well. I've certainly been in the room with him and Mike Pompeo, and Mike Pompeo was d very direct with him, and that's the only way to get through to him. So, yes, there has to be some teeth behind it. So if you say uh, every Russian soldier that crosses over to Ukraine is coming back in the body bag, you better be able to back that up, right? Uh, you better be able to to arm the Ukrainians. No one's, I don't think anyone is talking about U.S. forces here, but we're talking about arming the Ukrainians so that they can uh, deter Russia. They may not be able to d defeat Russia, but they're going to make it bloody. Right. They're going to make it costly enough that Russia's going to think twice. Number two, when we were talking about the cyber capabilities there, remember, we have seen report after report uh, that these Russian actors, and, and the Russians say, oh, they're private companies, you know, they're, they're not state actors uh, that are hacking uh, American companies. Well, it's a joke. It's on their soil. And so we need to start a sanctions campaign against Russian companies and against actors that participate in this. Again, raise the cost so that the Russian government feels like they have to deter the actors on their state. And finally, you know, free Navalny, I think that that is something that uh, many people in the Amer America has been caring about, and uh, we have to continue right. to stand up for human rights uh, in Russia or in China as it relates to Taiwan. They only, uh, st they only understand toughness. Real quick, uh, the Pentagon right. uh, is decided, is the, uh, the U.S., uh, Joe Biden has decided to have a diplomatic boycott of the Winter Games in Beijing. Quote, if the U.S. insists, uh, and this is China's response, if the U.S. insists in willfully clinging to its course, China will take resolute countermeasures. Because we're not sending any diplomats, any congressional delegation, certainly not the president, uh, the, uh, China is not happy. Is this a good move? Yes, it is. Uh, we should not confer legitimacy upon a country that is currently overseeing a genocide. Listen, there's things that I think the uh, Biden administration should have been doing earlier, uh, right? They should have. I, I wish they would have made this decision earlier, uh, brought more allies along with us, maybe even set up an alternative games, you know, for our um, athletes. That would have been very challenging. But I do think that we have to really worry about the. Uh, we have to be concerned about about the safety and security of our athletes. And I would say to them, your representative. America, you should stand up for human rights in China. Don't be silent if you're going. Right.